Hey guys and welcome back. In this video, I'm gonna go over the Atari 2600 specs and uh, quickly go over the TIA, which is the television interface adapter, which displays the sound and the pictures to the screen. So stick around for that. Okay, so we are right here on the Wikipedia page of the Atari 2600 hardware. I'm gonna put the link on the description and we are looking at the technical specifications and the first thing I'm gonna go over is the CPU which is a 1.9 megahertz MOS technology 6507 out of 6502 uh, the main reason they use the 6507 is simply because the 6502 was expensive so the Atari came to MOS and requested if they could make something cheaper and they did however they, the difference between the 6502 and the 6507 is that they took out a few interrupts and there is less memory address so there is only 13 pins available for us instead of the 6507 which has actually the whole 16 so and since there are exponential increase, there's quite a, f a chunk of of addresses that are not there. So that's the CPU. Next over, we have the audio and video processor, the TIA, which is the television interface adapter. And like it says, when you roll over, it's responsible for sound, display, the pictures, and really the, the input from the controllers. And here you see some of the extra specification really for the TIA, which is uses the 64, mainly uses on the description the NTSC, which is the National Television System Committee. So all of this is, uh, all the description at least is using the NTSC system. So we have a play field and here it's the resolution that we can have a 40 by 192 pixels so it's pretty much like a foreground in a way that's a play field have the player sprites it's 8 by 192 then have a bow and a, and a missile which is one one pixel by 199 then you have a maximum resolution by 160 by 190 92 pixels and here we have 128 colors possible and two channels of sounds also you have RAM which uses the RAID chip and you notice right here it's only 128 bytes that's not a lot, a lot to work with but and it does says that some cartridges include some additional RAM so uh, as the Atari 2600 grew older people starting to take advantage of the cartridge since it was and starting adding extra features to it and then the next over have a ROM which is the game cartridges which is the games which is started at maximum at 4 uh, kilobytes but then by bank switching, we get these 64 kilobytes. And uh, qu bank switching is pretty much like, it's like you're switching sections in memory. I'll go over that later. There we have our input controller, which is our joysticks, paddles, and trackballs. The six Atari 2600 had a lot of peripherals for different controllers. So that's gonna take care of it. The mouse riot it has six switches, at least the original one, the heavy sixter, power off, technical, and so forth. Uh, later on, like you have here in the picture of the Vader, he only has four, and the outputs and so forth. So that's the specifications of the Atari 2600. So now let me go and go over the quickly go over the TIA and how that works for picture frames at least. 
so before we go to the TIA let me go over the uh, reference material that I'm gonna be using and it's gonna be the 206 programming for newbies which owns it's on the Atari age forums made mainly by Andrew Davy and he go over all the programming of the Atari so 2600 so that's pretty much gonna be our base as well if you go over here it goes over a bunch of stuff that I might not have covered but what's important oh, right here you have the two emulators and where is it here it is the teleprogramming guide which is pretty much the book that they gave to the programmers for the for the Atari 2600 this Stella was the code name of the Atari 2600 before it was released and if you go over here that's like I'm gonna cover the TIA over here in this picture and here you have all all the information needed how to program to the Atari 2600 without that setting done now let me jump into the how the TIA framework works right here so here in this diagram we have a representation of what happens in a single frame meaning when it starts the the TV starts scanning the electro gun from all the ways to this scan line to this all the way over here to the beginning to here to here a single frame in display on the TIA this is what happens so let's go over really, really fast and I want to come here on the bottom to begin with and it says here 76 machine cycles if you remember from the video this machine cycles is the 6502 or 6507 I'm gonna use those names interchangeably which is pretty much the same so in 76 machine cycles 6502 cycles is gonna have one scan line so the gun is gonna go from the first point over here from left to right and that's happening 76 machine cycles and you see on the bottom of here three clock counts per machine cycles and you have 228 it is because there is 228 TIA cycles for for a single machine cycle because the 6502 is tied together with the TIA one machine cycle is equivalent to three TIA cycles so that's what it means is 228 and this is 76 so that's the main reason the next off we have three scan lines over here remember scan line from left to right and this three a special way we're pretty much telling the TV that a frame is coming so a frame is coming over here so get ready so that's gonna take three scan lines that's what the scan lines over here oh and really quickly you see here there's 262 scan lines over here that is because it is using the NTSC uh, system the PAL system which is mainly used was used on Europe actually has 312 scan lines instead of 262 which is mainly used in Americas so we have over here 37 vertical blanks and 30 over scan and this is because TVs back then wasn't meant the same wasn't meant the same wasn't made the same simply because some TVs would cut off higher points than others so just think of this uh, at, here you have pip and pitfall I'm sorry. I'm sorry so here we have pitfall over here but imagine just it going a little bit imagine if this was a bit up or a bit down a bit left or a bit right so in order to this is pretty much a good standard if you ever play the Stella emulator of some games some especially some of the codes I showed you before there's always this green area on top and on the bottom that 
is always there and that's the vertical and over scan it's pretty much this area that no mm, display area is drawn you're never gonna see this on an actual TV game per se but it is always there however it's not used for displaying and this main areas over here is where our logic is gonna go so that's the vertical blank which takes 37 scan line and you have a 30 scan line for the over scan and next over here you have a horizontal blank and I'm gonna show you on the next slide the wave of a analog again I showed you on the previous video on the CRT TV video but that's but that's when the TV is getting ready to display our scan line of our game over here so this horizontal blank is needed in order to scan to display the, all the information on the screen and then of course once it, and that takes 68 clocks of the TIA so during 68 cycles it's gonna take all the information needed and the rest 160 it is the display area and that's pretty much it but uh, I wanna put some emphasis over here on these machine cycles if you remember from the tutorials from the 6502 like if I were to load a value it takes really uh, a low a uh, let's say literal value zero a low takes two cycles meaning two times three is six so for whatever reason you're running our code over here and it comes over here and you know, like like let's say it takes seven cycles so or something even less not seven cycles would be too much let's say four four times three is twelve so our point is over here and and we haven't tell it to draw so this part over here is not even going to be shown on the screen no, it's going to be shown but it's it's not going to be a actual color so, so in this case it wouldn't be green probably be gray or something like that i don't know but it's going to offset the whole image so we've got to be careful with that i'm going to show you uh, still in this video a way that the programmers tell it to which is a W sync wait for the screen or still I'm gonna show you quickly but just be careful that all of this is really all of these numbers is set in stone how you're gonna use so if if you do a load and a store which takes five cycles that's fifteen and then the point is over here and then it's gonna draw in over here so just be careful so now let me show you this horizontal blank what's happening right over here okay so here we have a scan line signal and that's what's pretty much happening on the first 68 frames from the from the from the diagram I showed before is really what's happening is this front porch out of which is the back porch all this part is not the display area but the, the rest the 160 frames is this when this information that's sending to the TV which is the ray to, to to display is right over here so all of this information is gonna be the display area and all of this is gonna be the uh, the 68 frames and this is the display area which is the 160 frames so that's why there is this horizontal blank that you see in the diagram before so let's go over this code one more time since we already know what's going on and of course all of this is already commented so you know what's going on over here and the first thing that we're gonna notice so right here we have a load and store load and store so all of this is a 10 cycles we're gonna take to the machine so 10 times 3 is 30 it's well within the scan line and then we're gonna do a 
we're gonna store a value wsync. So we're gonna start the value a, which is two, whatever two to wsync, which means wait sync. And of course, if you go to the uh, the Stella programming guide, it's gonna sh explain what it, what this is. But I'm gonna show you right now on the Atari Phoenix 600 schematics. So here we have a picture of the schematics of the Atari 2600 and right over here we have a bunch of stuff here have the controllers here we have our 6507 our microprocessor notice from 0 to 12 so there's 13 addresses here is a data port but here is our main player that we're talking about the TIA and uh, as over here as you see it does have a way to communicate with the 6507 so since the 6507 and TIA is heavily synced, they need to work together. We can tell the so the 6507 is gonna tell WSync, which is pretty much gonna tell the TIA to wait till the scan line is over. So the TIA is gonna go back to the 6507 and say pretty much go to sleep. And while the the scan line is going the 6507 is going to be asleep so on the beginning of the next scan line the 6507 is going to be awake and then all the code is going to be run so when you see this wsync it's pretty much telling let me finish the TIA let me finish the other scan line go to sleep wake up when the next scan line is done then let's go back to work that's pretty much what it means so if now we know that wsync is Let's look at this code quickly again, like I said before. So here we have the three frames, the three scan line cycles. So go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep, wake up, go to sleep, wake up. Three repeats, repeat it in. So if you remember from the diagram before where the pitfall was, three, the first three. And then you have the first 37 for the scan line, the exact same syntax. Instead of three, now it's 37. And then here we have or in this code we're incrementing the color block which is the color each color is represented by a hex value so each hex value is a different color so here i'm incrementing and then once that is incremented we're gonna store that value store a which should be over here zero go to sleep and then start what's inside of x into the color block so it's changing each incrementation is changing a different color so you have re blank and over here we have our over scan and over here we have an interrupts so a quick run over here quick assemble so this green part over here is our vertical blank and our black part under there that's our overskin so that's pretty much it for this video thanks for watching in the next video i'm gonna go over the memory map of the atari 2600 thank you